recently I painted two married people uh-huh. on unicorns. Okay. Naked. Oh, gosh. Eating tacos. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> so that's like some AI art. <laughs> I would like. What's up, everybody? It's Jack here. This is the Pure World Podcast, and today we have Christine Clark. Hey, guys. For anybody who's listening or watching who doesn't know who you are, Christine, do you want to give them a quick little rocket pitch? Oh, my gosh. A rocket pitch on myself. Okay. Um, I am an entrepreneur, but I also have five other jobs that I kind of bounce around and love to travel, obviously love sustainability and adventuring. Um, I'm an artist. So anything I can kind of get my hand in, I'm all for it. Yeah, I, I definitely feel like artist is like the headline that yeah, I would give you for, for sure. sure. Um, what kind of art do you like to make? Um, I make everything from, I do a lot of pet portraits. So like oh, obviously yeah. like dogs and cats are like a big part of like our family and like our livelihood. Totally. So I do a lot of like watercolor acrylic art based on stuff like that. And I've done like some couples. Um, I've done just like landscapes, stuff like that. Wedding, wedding gifts are huge. I painted <laughs> recently, I painted two married people uh-huh. on unicorns. Okay. Naked. Oh gosh. Eating tacos. <laughs> oh, what? So that was like some AI art. I would like, he came up to me at my job and he was like, can I like approach you with like a really interesting commission idea? Yeah. And I always say yes. Yeah. Because if you're, if you say no, then. <laughs> Did on. you have to look at them naked in um, order to do it well, accurately? Well. Or is um, that details? No, that I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> so he sent me, he asked me per- permission for him to send me his wife. Okay. Naked. Yeah. And I said, as long as she's okay with it, as long as she's consenting, then I'm okay. Yeah, totally. And he said, no, it's a surprise for her. She doesn't know. (laughs) Oh, okay. Has has the gift been given? The gift has been given. Okay. Yes. No lawsuits. It is very large. It's like almost the size of your TV, probably. Wow. It's a big TV. It's like a 50 inch TV. Yeah. Yeah. For reference. (laughs) Um, But yeah, she was so happy about it. She sent me a video crying and she was like, this is the best thing I've ever are those like like her three favorite thing or you know like tacos and unicorns like <laughs> they're just like a weird I mean they're just like a fun loving like, like inside jokes at some yeah, point or something definitely wow that's super cool how did you get into making visual art like did it come naturally did you take classes yeah so I'm self taught so pretty much I have been doing just like everyone does when you're a kid, picking up some crayons, coloring. Um, But eventually it turned into, oh, I could look at that and draw that. Or I could paint this for somebody. And it's it's about like the actual gift giving. Because although like it's a commission piece, it's very like, it's personalized. Mm -hmm. Everything is personalized when it comes to art. So the people that are receiving the gift, it's priceless. It's so so priceless. When you were like a young kid, is Mm -hmm. that like, the way that you kind of like looked at art as like it was a gift. Yeah. Yeah. I always kind of looked at art like it was a personalized gift, like especially because art is so subjective. So if I'm painting something that I just enjoy and then you see it and it resonates with you or you're like, oh, I went to that, you know, national park and with my girlfriend or whatever, it, it just like it means so much to like give somebody something that was handmade. Yeah. And having like those details. Right. Uh, that's super cool. What about like the specific like mechanics mm. of making the art in terms of like, y- you know, like actually like drawing a picture or painting? There's a lot of um, style and there's a lot of like 
skill, I guess, involved. Yeah. And it makes me really happy when I'm on stage. So I work at a paint bar. I stand up on stage. uh, I pretty much walk through. I can walk you or anyone else through any painting. Uh Um, It's a step-by-step process, but pretty much it's just follow the leader at that point. Right. If I'm painting by myself, I have to go through a color palette, composition, Mm. um, have to go through obviously proportion, scaling, stuff like that. So there's a lot that goes into like... A piece of art, obviously. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just like talking about those two, um, like, concepts there. Scaling and proportions. Sure. And then color palette. Mm-hmm. Like, there is science and, like, mathematics in each of those things. Like, a color palette, like, there's a color wheel. Yes. <laughs> and there's complementary colors. Mm-hmm. and there, So, there's, like, some science there. And then there's also, like, with the proportions and scale, it's, like, Yeah. Like, do you make a grid or? So how it's funny that you say that because that is such a thing with realism. So or hyper realism. Right. Hyper realism Um, for sure. So if you're, you know, you want something to be exact. Yeah. A grid is something that you can definitely do. However, a lot of artists, as time goes on, you can see something and replicate it. And it, it is a lot of people are like, oh, wow, you're so talented. For sure. But it's also like a very learned skill. I've uh-huh. been doing it for a very long time. Yeah, yeah, so I yeah. can kind of see something, picture it, and then it's it's fast. Huh. Yeah, it's interesting that like you, your eyes are like almost like like proportion calcu- like yeah. calculators. Correct. Like you can look at the page and understand the different, like almost it visualize a grid without having to draw a grid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, Like I could look at your face and draw you right now and I'm confident that I could get you in proportion. Right. Huh. Well, (laughs) it makes me think of those, um, those big head drawings. (laughs) The caricatures? Yeah. That are just like not in proportion. (laughs) Not at all. Not at all. But you probably like, like for those caricatures, like there's also like a level of proportion. Yeah. There's a level of exaggeration Mm -hmm. that goes in because they're supposed to be like, funny right (laughs) like you're supposed to be picking different features of somebody's face and actually making fun of them right but i mean they're talented too just in a completely um different ballpark like there's so many different avenues of where your art can go yeah absolutely what's the like the paint bar like it's a wine is it a wine and paint bar yeah so it's like a paint and sip we would call it Uh uh-huh so pretty much the concept is you don't have to be an artist. You just walk in and you grab drinks, follow my lead. I'm kind of performing on a stage, um, try to throw out a couple jokes here and there, just keep people entertained because I don't know, when you go out, it's just like you have a night off, you're yep. stepping outside of your comfort zone. Some of these people haven't painted in 10 plus years. Some, right. some of the people, they've never painted. On like a canvas or something. Yeah. Right. Like, Think about somebody's day-to-day life. Yeah. Like this guy was having so much fun with it. And I went up to him and I was like, hey, when's the last time you painted? Like just out of curiosity. Right. And he was like, no, this is my first time. Like I'm an aerospace engineer. Yeah. I was like, yeah. He was like, I've painted a wall like in my house one time. Yeah. And like that was not like this. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah, like you're doing an awesome job. Like keep it up. And he was like, yeah, I'll probably like get some paint. And ex- exploring somebody's creativity mm-hmm. is priceless yeah because like you get so caught up in like your day-to-day of like oh i gotta do this i gotta do that nobody's sitting nobody's like okay i have to sit down and draw right. paint like right. but it really takes you back to like the basics and makes me feel like okay like kind of grounded like mm-hmm. i can take my time i'm in my own little world i put on some music it's a good time do people ever get like wasted there and like so often scene, yes <laughs> the answer is yes Jen. yeah <laughs> yeah um there was a group of ladies. They were celebrating somebody's divorce. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, exactly what you're thinking. It was literally the energy of a bachelorette party, but like times four. Got it. And they were just That's crazy. so drunk, just yelling yeah. things out. They were like, oh, like mine looks so bad or like look at yours and just like, yeah, just like crapping on everyone (laughs) or like would look at mine and judge mine or like is that supposed to be there what's next what's the next just like being such a disturbance yeah um but like you roll with it as long as you can yep because like that's the nature of your job you kind of have to improvise and like think on your feet however when it gets like too disrupting Mm -hmm. i mean 
you gotta go. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta go. Oh, geez, that sucks. Yeah, yeah. I just recently came from Nashville, and it's like Bachelorette oh, Central. I, I know, I love it. Though. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's fun. The energy is definitely there. Yeah. One thing that's interesting about Nashville, though, is there's like it's a lot of tourism. It's like a tourism yeah. based economy. Mm -hmm. And so there's like Airbnbs all over and the Airbnbs are very like scaled. Like there's like, it's like a 50 unit Airbnb right. place. That's all hosted by one owner and it's automated text messages. I was getting automated text messages every like three times a day. They'd be like, don't forget to have quiet hours at 10 PM every single night they and, have it figured out. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, but and then but like on top of it though, like they did have it figured out. Like it was a really really cool Airbnb, mm -hmm. it, but there was like supposed to be like cornhole in the on like the um There was no cornhole? No. No, like the pictures showed the cornhole, but like <laughs> Is that why you booked it? <laughs> kind of. I wanted not to play like, cornhole. Yeah, like not specifically for the cornhole itself, but there was like a a rooftop hangout area with like turf like green turf on the ground and there's like a, a television like an outdoor television and it was like you know barbecue and, and cornhole and then the right. cornhole set was broken and i'm like Damn. They, there's it just wasn't like personal like they thought of it yeah but like after the cornhole set got broken mm -hmm. they didn't do anything about it yeah and especially because like you're looking at pictures expecting it's not right. like you're touring the airbnb before you go in like right. the pictures are everything when yeah. you book something like that so for you to be excited about one aspect that's not there i mean they weren't really yeah. living up to yeah, what they yeah, promised yeah. what about you do you do you stay in airbnbs if oh, you yeah. travel oh yeah How, well, what are your thoughts so my thoughts uh, i'm like i'm 50 50 like if i can sleep in a tent yep in a safe area awesome like that's yeah. I mean, just cheapest. like, yeah, cheapest. Um, and just as long like, as it's weather permitting too. Right. Weather permitting safe. There's a lot of like aspects that go into like camping. Right. Um, a big, like sleep in the van kind of girl. Yeah. <laughs> um, yep. but I do like, I do like an Airbnb. It's nice to like hike, you know, 14 miles, get super sweaty, eat peanut butter jellies, like just, yep really bottom of the barrel type yep. of thing and then like stay in a really nice place get a good night's sleep shower yeah. like all that stuff's really nice um it brings me back though speaking to like about airbnbs the time that we went into new york city oh, with yeah. the gang and we <laughs> were going because we were meeting up a new with a new um order fulfillment partner and so it was like a business trip yeah. but you and Michaela came along with me and Rob and we got the Airbnb and it was the worst Airbnb I've ever stayed in. <laughs> I think in. I've ever stayed in. Yeah. Like easily. It was like, how is this considered an Airbnb? Correct. But we were in New York City mm -hmm. and New York City is super expensive and there, there were three beds, but it was only one bedroom and like you and Rob slept in like the common area <laughs> on your own couches and like... I don't remember if there was even a door to the bedroom. No, like, there wasn't. You're remembering right. Yeah, there was It was really a door. gross. It's so funny that like you're, there was like a water bubbler heater thing. Like if you hit it, you were going to burn yourself alive. Like, <laughs> That's so dangerous. I do like, it was, it was gross and dirty. Yeah. But then I remember like Rob and I opened the fridge and I think there were beers in there or something. Yeah. And that was like a win, like free beers. You were like, I don't even care how yeah. dirty the, the yeah, Airbnb they, they is. Deserve, There's beers. Yeah, good reviews. Like, if you if you as an Airbnb host give like a bottle of wine mm. or like have some Great beers point. or something, you get brownie points well, from me. On like any scale of business, right? If you undersell and overproduce. Oh. Over deliver. Over deliver. Over, Over deliver. deliver. Yeah. Like, I mean, think about it. Like, if you're not expecting to get something, even if it is dirty and there's couches and there's no door and there's a water bottle, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, but they gave us beer. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, it's so true. And it's like those little, it's the little things that can make a difference. Oh, definitely. I have trouble myself because um, I'm like a salesman. And so, like, I'll sell and like, 
oversell. Yeah, because it's and in it's, your nature. It's very easy to under deliver sure. if you've oversold. Oh, of course. It, you know, if so you many say, people fall into that trap. Yeah, and so I have to try to like catch myself. Like, don't sell it too hard. Be honest. Yeah. Set match the expectations yeah. with everybody, and that like goes. It's like not even for like just an Airbnb, but like literally every single partnership every right. single deal that i do like I, I really try to be on the same page and um shit happens recently yeah. recently we um we were negotiating with an artist okay on some new artwork Exciting. to release for this you know the holiday season sure. and um our our expectations were not matched oh, there was no. a little bit of miscommunication and and their price what I thought their price was going to be, mm -hmm. we, uh, like a little bit of context though, it was like a fixed upfront okay. fee, and then we were going to do we were going to profit share because I'm all about like oh, yeah, yeah. That's like fair equitable enough. like you know like partners that like get paid uh, you know based on based per on unit. Yeah, yeah I think that's a good not, idea not super ideal for the artists themselves unless they're working with someone who's going to push units we do expect to push units but we were giving 30% of our profits mm -hmm. so I think alone like 30% of profits is pretty good yeah. you can't get much better than 50% of profits like that's the ideal partnership yeah, and I think like I would like to work my way up to working with artists where it's like 50% profit share. Okay, well, keep me in mind. True, yeah, no, <laughs> 50 seriously. 50% keep me in mind. True, true <laughs> partnerships. And yeah, that's what like we're, a 50 -50. like, that's what I, I really love. But um, for this one, it was 30% mm -hmm. and an upfront fee. And I thought the upfront fee was acceptable, but she thought the upfront fee was per piece. So ah, it ended up being seven then, times more. Ah, yeah. So when we went to go sign on the dotted line, I was like, why is it 17 times or seven times right. more than what well, I was I'm expecting? Happy that you looked at what you were signing. Yeah. Because a lot of people fall into what you literally, what exactly what you said, that they're, you know, they're expecting something. And then if there's one, not a contract at all, yikes. Oh. Two. Um, if you, you know, you don't read it and you're just like, ah, like you said, like, you're so excited. You're, you're in it. You're, you're here for the partnership. And then like, you just sign it without, then like you're locked into whatever you just signed because yeah. your word is everything you have. Yeah. I hate it though. Also like I'll, we'll like sign, th like have people sign things, sign agreements. Sure. And then, and then like they'll, they'll think about it overnight or over care. the next two days. And then no. they'll be like, uh, actually, no, you know, this thing that I signed, like, I actually don't think it's fair. <gasps> it's then you like, shouldn't and I'm have like, signed it. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, that's not I how like the world know. works. Right. But the thing is, is we're on such small scale that like the reality is, yes, I can take you to small claims court sure, for sure. your couple hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally how expensive would the piece have to be for it to be worth going to small claims court? And then if you go to small claims court, can you represent yourself or how no, does that work? Do you have to so. have a lawyer? And if you have to have a lawyer, how many hours are you paying them? Right. How much would the lawyer's fees be for small claims court? And then that's like essentially the minimum amount of money that you could sue someone for. And so if it's three hundred dollars, no, yeah, oh you my just God, like no. you can't yeah. do it. But like three hundred dollars is is a substantial amount for sure. like small time artists and creators. Yeah. And so there's that like, I know there's like a fine line between like okay like. I want us to have a healthy partnership. I want us to even be friends, like have a mutual beneficial relationship. Totally. And then it's like, if they sign something and then they're like, mm, yeah, yeah, no, it's like, well, we just wasted all this time now. Yeah. So, so, all right, let me pitch you a little idea. Okay. I'm ready. Pitch me. <laughs> and it's, it isn't even necessarily. <laughs> Jack's like, I need a pitch you. <laughs> um, <laughs> on camera. Let's go. No, we work with like models a lot. Yeah. And um, we will like carve out time in our schedule to go meet with models. And then nowadays we've been doing it in bulk. We'll like, we'll like schedule four different models on one day, all different time slots. But, I know that life. But it would. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> yeah. It would happen so often where the models would say they were coming, but then they just like last minute, like leave us on red. 
You and got so, ghosted by models? Oh, we've gotten ghosted so many times by models. Um, <laughs> but it also, like, I could see it with, like, artists and creators sure. and, like, for, for, like, a small brand, like, hiring somebody for your logo or whatever. But, like, again, if it's less than the amount of money that you can take someone to small claims court yeah. for, there's really no protection under, like, what's the number? $900? Sure. $700? Well, to that, like, to that idea pretty yeah. much is people want to do business with those who they can trust. Right. They want to do business with people they like, know, and trust. Yeah. So if you seem, you know, reputable, they're like, oh, okay, like, I'll give this person my business. I'll even one step above that, create a partnership with the person. Yeah. Um, but then like you just said, like, I don't know, you need to kind of use your best judgment on, on everything like that. Yeah. Well, I was thinking just for like models and photographers, if there was some sort of like review. Well, it's so funny that you say that because I have been stood up slash ghosted by photographers. Yeah. They hire me and then they right. don't show up and I don't get paid till after the shoot right. because I mean, I'm not going to get paid before the shoot. Like that is, right, 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 it's right. a different like sort of business, I guess. Yeah. Um, like if you were commissioning a piece from me, you would pay me first. I would make it because right. I wouldn't make it. And then you, it was like buying a pair it's of so jeans. so interesting, you know I mean? that whole dynamic. Yeah. But the photographer, like they want to make sure one, I'm present Two, I'm who I say I am. I'm what yeah. I, I'm what I'm saying. Yeah, I look you're like, not you know, I'm not catfishing. Exactly. If, if, you, if he sent you the money, then right. you don't even have to show up. Right. You right. Could just and he said, he said when he ghosted me and I was like, Hey, like I'm, I'm at the location. I'm on time. Like, where are you? And he was like, like didn't say anything for like hours so I obviously left yeah and then his his back was like oh I got caught up in things like whatever and I was like okay that's fine but I drove an hour and a half to be here right. for a job yeah he was like okay like let's reschedule I was like no yeah I'm not rescheduling with yeah you. I was here like, for my time mm -hmm. period uh, so I held up my end of the bargain right yeah. And I, I even said that was my argument. I was like, pay me this time. Let's do it next time. And we're good. And he was like, right. no, no, no. That's not how things work. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. then that's fine. That's yeah. fine. I like, I was like, no hard feelings. But However, wouldn't, you love I not to, with you. wouldn't you love to be able to give a review to him? Would love. And like, I would say, say don't like, go down thumbs. Oh, thumbs down for sure. It's <laughs> like, just all two of the votes. Thumbs. You yeah. go, yes, yay no. or nay. <laughs> That's great. That would be like a really great app idea or like just like rate my business. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like exactly. Like um patent that, patent that. Get on get right. <laughs> well, so like another thing though that I find like with like shooting with models or um even for this like podcast, like just like coming together with a complete stranger mm -hmm. is there's like like you were saying, a level of trust that needs to be established and legitimacy I and mean, I agree, but we are anything but strangers. Yeah, right. Well, we've I mean, known each other since kindergarten. Yeah, we so, were yeah, six. <laughs> for, for those of you guys who are watching, that is the backstory between our relationship. Yeah. We were in kindergarten together in Attleboro, and we've known each other since. So yeah. for it's so funny a long time. to know somebody from when they are a child, literally like a spring chicken, and then you just get to like <laughs> see – what adventures they go on, yeah. what things they, they accomplish, the person they turn out to be. You know what I mean? And like, I feel like we both have very similar mindsets yeah. and like obviously a different way, but we're, I don't know. I always like admired you from afar. Thank for you. For sure. Thank you so much. I think that like, I, I heard once that like, if you're friends with somebody for like five years, mm -hmm. it's like friends for life. Oh my God. We made it. Yeah. Like I three times that, one Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> Wait, no, more than that. Yeah. That's crazy. In, you have to be like properly friends with them, but oh, okay, sorry. But like after it's like after it's a certain amount of time, yeah, it's like the friendship is there, and then you can jump back into it, right? No matter what, no matter the time or distance or anything like that. So I mean, I'm sure people definitely have friends that they haven't spoken to in months, but then when you call them, it's like nothing ever. Or when yeah. you see them, it's yeah, like oh, we're hopping. I mean, I yeah. definitely do too. Yeah. It's so funny. There's so many different types of like friendships, relationships, everything, right? everything of that nature. But relationships are everything, like everything. Yes. Yeah. So I, um, I recently was watching Jonah Hill's new, um, movie, okay. which is where he interviews his therapist. Is it real or is it's it? It's real. What? It's real. Yeah. It's very interesting. But what he talks about 
is um, this one concept. It's a pyramid and it's talking about like how to get to your passions. And like for somebody who may not have knowing, somebody who doesn't know their passion, how to like put yourself in a position to find your passion. Interesting. And it's a pyramid and there's three stages are the bottom. You have to become like passionate about your body. Oh, you're like physical. Oh, wow. I wasn't thinking that it was going like this. I'm so excited. Yeah. Your body. So, so like your body, like you're like, you have to like make, like be passionate about like your physical health. The vessel that you are in. Exactly. Got it. Then the next is. Before you go on, let me ask you a question. Do you think that pertains to someone's confidence? Like, do you think that's a correlation? Like you need to feel good about your body in order to get to the next phase? Like. Right. What? Right. Is it um, exclusive that like you have to feel good about your body? Right. I um I don't know because trying to think about people who are confident who maybe aren't physically healthy, and I feel right. like there there are some, totally. but they're probably exceptions to the rule. Right. Yeah. If that makes I sense. yeah I totally think that's definitely got to be it. Yeah. But I also think like. I don't know. We only have one. Like right. we only have one body. Yeah, so like totally. might as well be like, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> this is mine and I'm just yeah, going like, to like love it how it is and, it and whatever. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think, um, yeah, I think being comfortable. In Huge your, uh, on body positivity. Body. Totally. For sure. Yeah. We could talk about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but beyond body, the next level is people. Mm-hmm. Relationships. Mm-hmm. You know, like you, you have to like be passionate about like, the people in your life and like those relationships. Yeah. And that's something easy. Like everybody has those. And then the last stage is like your mind. Okay. And yourself. Mm. And, um, once you've like hit, you know, your body, the people in your life Mm -hmm. and your mind, like you can find like peace of mind. It opens yourself up, right, to, to now be ready to mm-hmm. to find that passion. But That's like, so interesting. So for anybody who's listening and watching who doesn't know exactly what their passion is, this is the suggestion to start to find it. Yeah, and I feel like you find your passion through trying so many things, right? And like, I feel like so many people they're like, oh, like I've never been rock climbing, I've never been to archery right i've never like just do it i am like a big believer in doing just a bunch of random things until you're like oh, i'm kind of good at this yeah. i kind of like this i kind of yeah. like this community of whatever it is that you're doing yeah absolutely and there's so many different types of communities out there like i recently um have been rock climbing a little bit me too yeah i don't like rock climb that much i'm personally not like i wouldn't say i'm passionate about it that's, yet. That's fair. Yeah, you need yet. to like do it enough yeah. to be like, I like this a lot. But it's such a it's such an interesting community of people. Mm-hmm. And without like pushing myself and like honestly a little bit in an uncomfortable situation of like sure. pushing myself because what I was doing was I was um, bouldering outside, okay. which is very difficult and it's and not- dangerous. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you have to have like mats and their spotters and yeah. hopefully don't fall on your head. Uh-huh. Um, but it's not very easy for beginners. It's not man made. It's like, Correct. it's difficult. And so I was like a little bit uncomfortable being out bouldering for like multiple days, like three or four days. Wow. But seeing that community, I got exposed to them. And now I like I have a little bit of an idea of what that community is. And like if right. at some point in my life that I feel like that's what is drawing towards me, I know what to kind of expect. Right. I know maybe who to recommend mm. that hobby to. Yeah. I I bet like archery has a completely different community. For sure. So like how I'm thinking of it is like, okay, people might be thinking, where do I start? Think of the attributes that a certain community has. So Mm -hmm. like, for example, rock climbing, they are physically fit. Right. They are big on encouraging others. Yeah. Put your left foot here. Put your right. Totally. It's like a big like, and and maybe if you're like, oh, I hate being told what to do. Maybe rock climbing isn't it. You know what I mean? But like, that's just one aspect of, you know, identifying with some of the attributes and then being like, 
I could maybe fit into there or I want to be the type totally. of person. Yeah. You know, the, you know, they hang out outdoors. Yep. Outdoorsy, of course. If you want like fast satisfaction, yep. it's, you know, might be not the easiest thing to like achieve in your first try. Right. It's like a long term. Right. If you're not like easily curve. discouraged. Yeah. I always say when you're trying something new, it needs to be difficult enough. So it's challenging. Yeah but not difficult enough that it's discouraging. Yeah. So like somewhere in the middle of like, this is doable, it's right. satisfying, but it's still like challenging, hard, all that stuff. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like other things like that. I, I So like I, um, I, when I was like a little kid, I asked for a guitar for Christmas mm -hmm. and I, I was like so convinced that like the second I got this guitar, you were gonna rip it. I would be able to just like rip it yeah. and like <laughs> play like Jimi Hendrix on yeah. it, just because like I was meant to rip it. Yeah, and like I couldn't do a single thing on it. But it's so funny though, because when you're a kid, you like envision yourself like you're like so excited. You're like, I'm gonna get a guitar. I'm gonna be a guitarist. But like honestly, now you are right. Like you know how to play. Yeah, yeah. It took it took some time. But it but, took like, time, I, I, and people never. People never see the behind the scenes. Right. You know what I mean? Like they don't see you in your room, like strumming, like practicing chords and like your fingers. They just see you play and they're like, wow, that guy can play guitar. Yeah. And but for it's, you, it's yeah. like a part of your identity. Yeah. I, I think um, the other thing that was interesting, like back then I must have been too young and YouTube probably was too young as well for sure. me to like necessarily just like learn on YouTube. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. And eventually I got put into lessons like my dad put me into lessons because mm -hmm. there was a free lesson downtown. Ooh. Like, like one first lesson free. And you were like, I'm there. Yeah. Um, and I remember in the first lesson, the whole thing, like I, like his whole goal was to teach me one song, to like get me to play okay. like one thing to show, that makes sense. to show that it was possible. And so that, yeah. that like uh, teaching style and, and uh, pedagogy hmm. is, um, is like really helpful in getting people inspired to, to take something up. Yeah. So what I was just mentioning is the philosophy that I use as a personal trainer. Mm. So like when I'm in the gym, I need to make sure gauging on my client on what their, you know, their physical fitness is, whether they're beginner, intermediate or advanced. If I have the same workout for every one of my clients, it is not going to work. It's not right. a one size fits all. Yeah. So you need to gauge weights, repetition, level of difficulty, range of motion, everything mm -hmm. based on the person. When you're training people, uh, is it all f women or have you ever nope. trained men? Um, I have trained men and women 16 to 85. 16 years old to 85. Yeah. Wow. Um, what is it like to like train men? Yeah. Okay. Great question. Um, sometimes awesome. Like, Really cool, just like any other client would be. They're listening. Um, they're putting what I'm saying to application. Um, just like any, just like anything. It's not weird. It's right. great. Um, and I've I've trained, like I said, like 16 years old to 85 years old. Um, and I've had men all ages. Mm -hmm. I've had like 52 year old guys that are like so awesome. Yeah. Like they make my day. Yeah. I've also had men that don't want to listen. Mm -hmm. They think like, oh, like you're a woman. You can possibly know more about right. like a gym space than I do. Yeah. And it's like, it's all an ego thing mm -hmm. because I have a certification and they do not. That's yeah. why they're, and their initial is like, oh, this is fine. Like I want to learn like all that stuff. So that's one route. And then the other route is like a very creepy, a very yeah. like, oh, can you do the movement for me? Can you do it again? Yeah. Can you do it again? Huh. And I'm like, you can just feel someone's vibe. Like, right. And I stop it. Imme well, actually, I try to give them a chance. I really do. Like, yeah. if it's like too creepy, then I'll just be like, yep, no. It, like, if I was ever on a first date, yeah. I kind of think of it like that. And I felt uncomfortable. I would never stay. Right. Like, right. I would never sacrifice my own comfortability to please someone else. Yeah. Never. Mm -hmm. So I give them a chance. I'm saying, hey, in the most professional way. You're making me feel a little bit uncomfortable if we could just stick to kind of follow my lead, you know, whatever. And like I do it in a way that's like not intimidating. Um, and if they're like, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to make you feel that way because that's happened. Um, and then the rest is fine. Or if they're like, huh? Right. Or like, oh, okay. And then like it progresses. 
I'm just like, yep, not the trainer for you. Maybe uh, Walter would be a better fit. And right. then we move on. Wow. Yeah. Uh, how Do you find that it's difficult, like, because men have a little bit of a different body type? Or do you, do you understand, like, the exercises that, like, men are trying – should be doing to achieve the body right. that they're looking for. Yeah. So obviously like men and women are built very differently. Right. We have different um, chemicals in our bodies and we can just do things easier. Both men and women, our center of gravity is different. Men's Definitely. are in their chest. Yep. Women's are in their stomachs. So it's like for that, yeah, I know the difference between like how a man should train. It's not how I'm training, yeah. but I can tell you what to do to achieve, um, muscle mass or yeah. if you want to lose weight tone whatever the whatever the case may be yeah um so that's not a factor like i don't have to put into application what i know into my workouts to help them kind of be the best version of themselves right because that's like all i'm after as a trainer mm -hmm. like somebody walks into me and i'm trying to make sure that they can be the best version of themselves yeah. whether that's like improving their confidence or just like instilling healthy habits of like right. going to the gym like we just said like body it's the first one it's yeah. the first one to totally. the pyramid yeah so like just like feeling good about yourself can set you up for such success totally and i've had so many clients that are like you have changed my entire life like not only like am i feeling good but like i am feeling myself nice and that is like the best thing ever. yeah yeah that's definitely the goal i yeah. think everybody wants to achieve if even if they don't necessarily know that that's how to achieve it right everybody wants to feel a little bit more comfortable mm. which one do you like better the paint bar or um training um like physical training that's really hard i feel like i don't know like i told you like i have so many jobs yeah <laughs> um and they all serve like a different purpose in my life because i feel like i am not one person Right. I don't like fit in a box. Like uh -huh. so many people when they meet you, they're like, so what do you do? And yeah. I love saying like, well, I do a lot of things. And like yeah. m what I do for a living is not my livelihood. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know. I, I have my hand in a lot of things. Um, but between the two, obviously different vibes all around. But I, I do like being on stage. I do like teaching art. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I don't know. Just, just to express that to someone is really cool. Do you... Do you think like forward thinking into your career, you would ever want to start your own paint bar or do you think it's better off that you just work at someone else's? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so from a young age, I always knew that I was going to make people art. Like I said before, like the gift giving thing right. was always huge. Yeah. Um, but as of more recently, so I took the job at the paint bar so I could kind of accrue all of this knowledge. Um, I actually have a binder at home cool. <laughs> with like, um, just like sales stuff, how they run things, everything. So I'm kind of like making a master list as I'm kind of going through it. Problems arise. I see how they're kind of fixed. Yep. Um, so the goal is to have my own, Yeah. but not something that you're thinking, not like I have a shop and people come in and they paint and sip. Classic. Okay. So the goal is to move to San Diego within the next six months. Oh, wow. And to go to different wineries, breweries, bars, and be like, hey, have you ever thought of hosting a paint night? Nice. I'm a business owner, artist. I'm going to set up. I'll have everything. I'll have the tables. I'll have the easels. I'll have paint, cool. whatever. Um, and I don't have to have a liquor license because in the establishment, they already have it. Right. So that's the mutual beneficial relationship. They're not paying me. The guests are paying me. They're, they're going to come to the bar. They're yep. going to have a good time. Most people at a paint and sip have at least two drinks. That's two more drinks. Yeah. If there's 12 people, that's yeah. 24 drinks. You know what I mean? So that's kind of the atmosphere that I want to do. We'll see how it works. Um, I've already took it, taken some steps to get there, prepping myself here. So when I get there, it'll be kind yeah. of like a smooth transition. Yeah. But do you think see how it goes. do you think that when you take on that um that business mm -hmm. idea do you think that the bars will be bringing in the people or do you or breweries you know the mm. the liquor providers will be bringing the people or 
would you be bringing in the people? Yeah, that's a great question. So I feel like at first, because I am not well established, because yeah. I don't have a reputation, it will be the bars. Mm -hmm. It will be like I'm putting up flyers, having like a little QR code. Like if you want to sign up, it brings them to my website. Um, and then they're signing them and, hey, we should do this. This yeah. is so cute, whatever. Um, they're signing them up by QR code. They sign up online and then they'll come. So after that, I think it'll start off small, but after a word of mouth and people are having so much fun, I hope then it kind of grows from there. And they're like, oh, you should do this. I'm Cause we have, it's not like you paint one time. You're like, all right, that was it. Never do it again. Right. Like people come in every week. Yeah, totally. Painting something different. I've been thinking a lot about, um, like a marketing funnel, okay. like just like marketing funnels in general. They have, there's like four stages. The first is awareness. Second is interest, desire, and then action. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's like the funnel that I like to think about in terms of marketing. For something like that, I I really think that like Instagram ads. Oh, yeah. And True. Facebook ads can be the top of that funnel because what you could do is you can target your ads based on the geographic area. Mm -hmm. And so if you're doing a night in one of the bars – you could target ads around the town of that bar. Right. And they're like, wait, this is right next to me. Like, I want to do that. Exactly. And mm -hmm. you're sending real time ads where it says like, are you in Attleboro? This Friday night, you should come down to this paint bar. Right. Almost like an invitation. People yes. People love an that. An invitation. And then, and then they click on that. Yeah. And then they can go to your like website where you like sign up mm -hmm. for it and you get, and they give you your, their phone number or something. Yep. And now you have their contact information mm -hmm. and then you could like build the community in that way. Right. But like to be able to bring people into the bar, mm -hmm. bars would love to yeah. hear that. Oh, so like yeah. there's one side of it where like bars like love it when people come and they do trivia night. Yeah. Yeah. But then like if you, if that person can bring in people to the bar, right. Then eventually, like, of course, that's the goal to yeah. have like a certain amount of following. That's like, oh, Christine's doing a paint night Wednesday night. Like we need right. to go. And then it doesn't matter what brewery, what winery, what bar I'm in. I'm like, oh, I'm bringing 30 people into your establishment. Right. That's good. Right. And they're like, yes, please come back anytime. Right. And then, you know, maybe start off free. Like, hey, this is uh, you let me hear it. Great. Whatever. And then after time, maybe I'm bringing in so many people that I charge a you know, of just a flat fee of whatever. Right. So. Well, and then like, imagine like if you took, like if, if it was like some sort of experience, like a paint bar experience, mm -hmm. and then you like branded it, created some sort of like really interesting name to it. Mm -hmm. And then people were joining this like community. They were like signing up, like, Hey, I like to paint. Right. Like, yeah. I'll do it whenever it's near me. Mm -hmm. And then like, you could almost like scale it like nationally. Nationally. Where yeah, like national. <laughs> Did you say nationally? nationally? <laughs> <laughs> but like you could like you could create an entire like you could take this paint bar concept yeah. and then you could almost franchise it out. So it's funny that you say that because like my my brain is always turning. So the only way that that would happen is because or the only way that would happen is if I were to interview because if you if you think about it. I want somebody to go in and be the whole package. Like yeah. I don't want multiple five people coming in, like setting things, whatever. One person to come in, they know how to talk to people. So they're great in customer service. Yeah. They are an actual artist. Yep. They can paint. They're really good at public speaking. You yeah. need to have so many. You yeah. Can, you need you to be like talk. an entertainer. Right. Literally, you need to be a performer. Like, yeah. absolutely. You're performing on the stage. Like, you need right. to be able to keep high energy, be concise, be clear with your instructions. Like, nobody wants to be like, wait, what'd you say? Yeah. Wait, it's a, it's a like it, it, performer and operator. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm those teaching, are hard to. Yeah, I'm teaching something that like people are putting to application right, right away. They don't yeah. really get a chance to conceptualize what I'm saying. Whether like, for example, if you're in a lecture, you're like sitting there, you're like, okay, I could maybe put this to application on like a quiz or a test later. But I'm like, okay, do this technique that I just taught you four seconds ago. Go. And right. they're like, okay, but it's low stakes, yeah. right? I always say like, we make fun art, not fine art. So yeah. like. Take your time. You got your little zingers breathe. in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Like, I got them. And I always say, like, 
encourage the person who's next to you or make fun of them, whatever your relationship yeah. is. And like, it's lighthearted. People always are like, oh, okay. Like a lot of people, like I've had so many people cry, kids, yeah. adults, like they're like, my painting is bad. I'm like, guess what? Throw it away and come back. Yeah. Like it's not that serious. <laughs> totally. It's really not that serious. Yeah. I mean, it seems like a fun, just a fun activity. Yeah. Would you ever go virtual? So I was also thinking that, um, so like, that's more of like a Bob Ross feel, obviously. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like I was thinking about maybe like creating a YouTube channel or like something that's so niche, like literally just me painting. Yeah. But it's also like, well, it would be two hours because I need yep. to go step by step. There's no really like, oh, let's do like a fun, like 15 minute, like, ch -ch 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 -ch. Mm. Like yeah. you can't really speed up the process of painting. I mean, I guess I could like explain it and then like do whatever I had to do in like fast motion. Yeah. Um, but people want to see the application. Like they're staring at me as I'm putting the brushstrokes on the canvas. Yeah. Cause then they have to do it themselves. So it depends. Um, I mean, it depends if people would like that. Yeah. I, I think like, what if like you, um, what if you like did like a proper painting, mm -hmm like two hours long and you're filming yourself for two hours long mm -hmm. in high resolution step by step. And then at the end it's like, and if you liked this, then click on my website and buy the package for 10 more sessions. Right. Yeah. And then you literally have 10 other videos in a package and it's all up front. You just right. create and film them and right. now it's passive. Well, it is, got it. it is a really good point to what you're saying because you know, a lot of people like to do things in their the comfort of their own home. Totally. Like a lot of people are like, well, I don't want to go to a paint bar and embarrass myself because I don't know how to paint. Like I just want to, and I don't have somebody to go with or, you know, whatever the case is. So they watch YouTube videos or whatever content that they want and they're like, I can do it myself. Yeah. So that is a good point and maybe something. Just, just throwing, just, I, just I'm like, just throwing things. ideas out. You're always throwing just ideas throwing at ideas me. ideas out. Who knows <laughs> what else will stick, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's all really exciting stuff. Um, yeah. How have you been sleeping lately? <laughs> <laughs> um, good. Other than last night, I didn't sleep at all. That's so oh, really? funny that you're asking me this question. Dang. Because <laughs> like normally I sleep eight hours a night, no problem. Like my head hits the pillow and then I wake up when my alarm goes off mm -hmm. and I'm like ready to rock and roll. However... I spent the weekend at Encore in Boston. Have you ever been? No, but I um, I know of it. Okay, good. So Forbes, for those of you who are, are watching or listening and don't know what Encore <laughs> right, is, yeah. tell us. So it's a casino club um, hotel in Boston and Forbes just rated it five stars, like one of the nicest establishments in the it's world. It's brand new. It's brand new. But apparently the the basement floods or something. Like no they, way. They built it on like marshland, like <laughs> land that like Idiots. shouldn't be built on. It's just like funny. Like it did flood like last year or That's something. That's so funny. I would never but know it's that. Like the, it's one of the nicest buildings. It's a casino. Yeah. Looks really like a fun night. They have like, I mean, not that this even matters, but they have 25,000 fresh flowers in their lobby. Oh my God. Yeah, I saw that Excuse recently, me? actually. Someone I'm, someone I'm following put it on their story like yesterday. Because it's crazy. Like, that's a crazy fact. And people, florists are walking around, spraying the flowers, taking the bad ones out, putting new ones in. Like the attention to detail wow. is impeccable. Wow. Impeccable. Cool. But I was just like, I don't know, celebrating a friend's birthday, like danced my life away. This is the best hack of any anything. Wear sneakers to the club. Yeah. There, I said it. Yeah. There. Take your pictures and your heels before. Do what you need to do. No judgment. However, I wore my Air Forces nice. at Memoir in Boston. Everybody else, chef's kiss. Me, nice. sneakers. Yeah. And I tore up the dance floor and had an awesome night. It was an EDM like um, DJ. Right. So I was like, I'm going to jump around. Mm -hmm. I need to jump what around. What else would you wear? Were you wearing a dress? Oh, yeah. I was full wearing a dress, for sure. Um, and you normally would be wearing heels. For sure, yeah. And I was wearing heels. But then I thought to myself, would I rather look the part yeah. and impress other people? Right. Or would I rather have fun? It's crazy that... that and the women, answer is always the second. Women wear heels mm -hmm. out to clubs, mm -hmm. like dance, ED. 
Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Everybody's At least wearing flats, heels. Flats, maybe? Flats? You would want to be in flats. Ballet flats? Like flats? Open toed flat? Why are you wearing open toed like, <laughs> anything? Like that is so, like someone steps on your foot, it's yeah. going to hurt. Oh, you're done. Oh my God, I have, I cannot even tell you the amount of times that I've been at a club bar situation and a girl steps on my toe Ooh, with their stiletto no. heel. Mm -mm. And I'm like, I want to die. I want to It's so die. messed up. Mm -hmm. It's that, so messed up. Like you're not allowed to go into like, there is certain clubs in like Miami, Las Vegas, LA, right. that the dress code is women have to be in heels. Wow. Like you can't go in in sneakers, but men, don't worry, you're good. We can wear whatever we whatever want. Whatever you what want. I, yeah, what would I even wear? I don't know. I don't go to clubs. I know. All I was going to say you probably haven't been to a club in a <laughs> little bit. Yeah. Huh. Well, that's that's really interesting. I, in like some places, like in Mexico. Mm -hmm. In this, like, you know, the surf town, like, people go out to the club in their bathing suits. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. I'm into it. It's like, yeah, why not? Fuck it. You know, you're in your bathing suit. It's basically, it's on the beach. Yeah. If you want, you take a dip. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Nighttime swimming. It's cool. Um, Very fun. Okay, so what got us into Encore again? Sleeping. Because I didn't sleep last night. I was, like, riding such a high that like I think my endorphins were just like, I don't know, my adrenaline maybe mm -hmm. was just like so high. Right. And then I went in my bed obviously to sleep as one does. Yep. Um, and my eyes just like, they kept popping open. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you drink caffeine? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. I take 250 milligrams of caffeine almost every day. Take it? Well, yeah, like in a pre-workout. Oh, just like the first thing you do? No. Oh my God. Could you imagine I wake up? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I, <laughs> no, I, before the I gym. Like that's what some people like do. Like 30 minutes. I know. So I don't do a morning coffee. A uh -huh. lot of people will, um, morning coffee, morning tea. Right. Morning. I just slam some water. Mm -hmm. And then do you go to the gym in the morning or in the. Depends on my day. Depends right. on my schedule. Um, would love a morning lift if yeah. I can. But sometimes I have clients in the morning. And obviously I can't do that. And then I, clients to like train them. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like personal training clients. And then sometimes I have like a shoot or I need to make content for Aerie or whatever else yep. I'm doing. So sometimes I can't, I got a, a night lift. But other than that, you generally like sleep yes, pretty well. I do. Yeah. How about you? Yeah. I sleep pretty well. Oh, okay. What do Thanks you for dream? Asking. Yes, I dream. Yes. I, <laughs> I'm an avid dreamer. Have been ever since I was a kid. Do you keep a, a dream journal? Yes, I do. Really? I have a dream and a joy journal. A and, joy journal. Mm -hmm. oh, tell me about those. Okay. <laughs> so the joy journal is at night before I go to bed. So your subconscious um, always is on, even if you're unconscious. So basically by writing down the joys that you've experienced in your day, you kind of like go to sleep on a good frame of mind and it helps you sleep better. Whoa. It's like scientifically proven. <laughs> so I write three to five. Okay. If I like that. Yeah. And like you can always write three. I mean, that's what I tell myself. You can always write three things. Like the other day I bought a new chapstick. I was like, that's going in my joy journal. That nice. was an absolute win. Nice. Like they had, a, they had the one I wanted and it's like, that's so small, but like, I don't know, just like little things that I'm like, okay, this brought me joy. Boom. I talked to this person. I haven't seen them in so long. Boom. Like yeah. just like little things that I do. And I do it every night religiously. Mm -hmm. Like even if I'm not at home and I don't have like my physical journal, I'll write them on my phone. So I, I have like a note section. Yeah. How big is your physical journal? Oh, it's just like, just like, like a, a normal casual like college ruled or something. Yeah. Like yeah. That. Sure. College uh, Wide maybe. ruled maybe. No, like it's a small one though. <laughs> yeah, it's it is. not like a full... Um, and do you write your joys and your dreams in the same one? No, they're separate. <laughs> Whoa, I don't mix. No, yeah, for why? <laughs> um, yeah, so my joy journal is yellow. I don't know why, but I just feel like yellow represents like happiness, joy, yep. sunshine, brightness, sure. whatever. That's one. And then my other one, my dream journal makes no sense. Like there's, uh, <laughs> sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I, if I go back to sleep, I won't remember. So I like fumble over and like scribble something. It's great. That one's blue. Okay. So that's how I kind of tell them about gotcha. it. Gotcha. I feel like I would want to like combine the two so that it's just like my one like nighttime journal. Totally fine. But yeah. I 
I love to write. I mean, I'm an artist. So like, I love to write things down. I love to have things. I also have a planner. Like I have so many right. like notebooks, sketchbooks on like the side of my desk. That's yeah. just like the person I am. Right. But you could totally do a two for one special. Yeah. yeah Joy yeah, in the front, one. dreams in the back. Let's, <laughs> let's go. I, I get caught like with my journal, I am only writing operational to-do lists very rigid like not it's not fun yeah those there's go, no those go in my planner <laughs> yeah right there's no like like lofty like oh i'm thankful for this right right it's all like this is what you, you have to do and yeah. you have to do it right now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like like have you done a checkup with all, each one of the employees right. and mm -hmm. like these are all the different things that you need to like make sure are running today totally. so to the point that you just said, a lot of people do to-do journals and not gratitude journals because, yeah. you know, they have to get things done, all this stuff, whatever. But it's also like as crucial to express <laughs> gratitude, even if it's yeah. just to yourself. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm thankful for this. I'm grateful totally. for this, whatever. And to like let other people know. Like, yeah. hey. Like, oh, yeah. hey, I like really I wrote, appreciate yeah. you. Like whatever, whatever it is, like if, even if it's small, like, Hey, I was just thinking about right. you today. Like, I feel like that makes a big impact in my life. Like totally. when my friends are like, Hey, just thinking about you. Hope you have a good day. I'm nice. like, my day is made in the joy journal. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's really, that's, that's very nice to do for, mm. uh, for other people and yeah. for yourself. Um, I bring my journal into the sauna at the gym. Oh my God. And I was just thinking like what it would look like if I started going into the, the sauna with two journals. <laughs> People like, already look at me like weird, but like if I had two journals and I was writing different, you know, like. They're like, this guy's cracked out of his yeah, mind. what is this guy writing? Uh, I'm sure they're the always Do the pages wondering. get like moist? A little bit, oh, but then okay. they dry off because I open it later that day to like get back to where, you know, where I, I left off. Um, yeah, some some guy that I met the other day asked me what I was studying. Oh, and interesting. I, and I, like, I went like, oh, uh, like. How presumptuous of him yeah. to assume that you were studying. Right. No, I'm just studying the reps that I did today. Right, right, right. You're like, <laughs> I need to know. <laughs> My workout. <laughs> no, like, I mean, like, bringing a, a journal to the gym, though, yeah. is like a gym journal. Have you ever seen of that? Of course. Yeah, all the time. It's, do, you, um, do you keep track of your workouts like oh, that? Oh, yeah. I have a split, so I do a six-week like the same thing every right. every time I go into the gym for six weeks. Same thing. So you, so you don't split it up day by day, muscle group by muscle group? So that's a great question. Um, normally, like in my six-week splits, they're all different. So like maybe one split will be like upper, lower, push, pull. Maybe another split and will be every like- every day you come in. Will be like legs dominant. So like yeah. my legs are getting creamed for six weeks pretty much. So right. like I'll do four days legs, one day upper body. <laughs> Is it crazy? Yeah. Absolutely. Does it work for me because I like to be stimulated in the gym? Yes. Uh -huh. So like for six weeks, I can nail down the pretty much the motion of the movement. Right. Like get it down the way I need to, mm -hmm. feel confident about it, progressive overload in all of my weight so I can build the muscle mass. Do you find that you have to like give your muscles a rest though? Do you do you take a a rest day in yeah. between every gym day? No. Oh my god, no. But because you're doing the same muscles, you don't need that that extra rest. Yeah, so like on the topic of like recovery, um obviously your muscles need recovery, but I'm not pushing myself to a one rep max. Yeah. Like every time. I mean, Got if it. I did then yeah, absolutely like I I need to lay down. Mm -hmm. Um but I take like uh, BCAs. I don't know if you're familiar, but it's just no. like a muscle recovery. Um, I also take creatine. Uh -huh. So like those two put together, it's just, I'm just like, I'm just talking about what I do. Yeah. Um, those two kind of like are kind of keep your cycle. Um, st uh, I don't know, productive, I guess. Got it. Okay. So does creatine, uh, have any negative effects and like do we know everything like all the science on like maybe like long-term effects right so there has been long-term studies on creatine of like 20 25 years but not something that's like like a lifetime worth of studies but it is like clinically proven to be safe it there is a lot of studies that are in the positive like more studies in the positive than the negative mm -hmm. um which Obviously, if you're taking a new supplement, please do your research. Like, that is yeah. so important. Yeah. Um, and I would, like, never take something because somebody else told, oh, it's good. You should take it. I'm like, 
mm, hmm. I don't know. I'm always like kind of a little Airing skeptical. on the side of caution. Yeah. So you work as kind of like a model and a creator for some brands? Yeah, I do. Yeah. What's the, what's... What's that like? Um, okay, so working as a creator is always like you're freelancing yourself. You're selling yourself. True. You kind of need to know your shit behind like any analytics. Can I swear on your podcast? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah it's fine. <laughs> I, don't I, I, I ask them. <laughs> I know. Sorry. <laughs> um, you have to know your stuff, basically. But yeah, I am a long-term partner with Aerie. And if okay. you don't know what Aerie is, it's a branch off of American Eagle. Um, pretty much one of my dream brands that I landed. Wow. It's awesome. Um, yeah. And pretty much their, their mission is to just pretty much help women feel empowered mm -hmm. to make them feel beautiful and comfortable in their own skin and in the clothes that they're wearing. Wow. And how did you get that? Um, so my sister-in-law actually, she's a influencer and she's like everything social media, Cool. but she was like, Hey, like they're looking for people that are bright that are positive, that are body positive, like, I think you should do it. Like, you would be the perfect person to represent Aerie. And I was like, oh, if, like, do you think so? Like, that's so nice, like, whatever. And she was like, yeah, like, you should at least apply. So I was like, okay, it's like any other job. Like, mm -hmm. you're just, like, applying with, you know, I didn't know how many pages it was going to be. Like, I started, it wasn't, like, one through five. It was, like, one, two, three, four. I was like, when is this going to end? Yeah. But obviously, this is, like, an online application. Yeah, online application. Uh, online application obviously it was worth it but um so i sent that in and didn't hear back from like two three months like i was like i definitely didn't get it right and then i got an email back that was like hey we're interested in you you're like in our next tier of people and they only hired 200 out of like twenty thousand applicants Jeez. so this that's huge was like out of the question like i was yeah. like oh this is just a pipe dream uh -huh. like basically but you miss 100 percent of the shots that you don't take so mm -hmm. i was like Okay. Go for yeah, it. Yeah, let's go. So I did like four or five interviews with different like creative mm -hmm. directing teams and like the CEOs and like everything. Like if you're the brand ambassador of a company, you're the face. Like they want to yeah, they want right. to make sure you are who you say you are. You're well spoken. You have good intentions. Right. You're authentic. Like you can produce high quality content. Yeah. Basically, is what they're after, and they're looking for you to share their mission in however in however way you know how. Yeah. I mean, yeah, being the face of a brand isn't easy. Mm, yeah, it's a lot of pressure. Like I have um, like interviews with them or mostly, I guess they're not interviews. They're more like check-ins um, mm -hmm. just with like the creative director of social media. She needs to approve my post. Mm -hmm. She needs to tell me if like my branding is on. And then she pretty much will go through um, my engagement um, percentage to like this week I was in the top 4% of like wow. all engagement, which is very exciting yeah, because that's awesome. if you're putting something out into the universe and you're like, okay, I feel good about this. I like it, whatever. It shouldn't matter what other people are kind of thinking, but with social media, it does because yeah. your engagement like either raises you or puts you down. So it's just like, it's so weird. It's yeah. such a funny, interesting uh, Social thought. media is interesting. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you have something to say. Yeah. If you have something to say, you you got to say it. Like that's the most 100%. important, the, the most important thing. Like yeah. people want to hear you if you have something to say. Yeah. And yeah. anybody can post like a cute picture or whatever. Bikini but, like, picture. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but like you need to have something to say. Yeah. That's that's what life is. And if you do have something to say, then you should, you should say it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. A hundred percent. Absolutely. Time. Well, thank you so much yeah. for coming today. Oh, and this was a pleasure. Thank you for Everybody, thank you for watching. If you want to support the podcast, you can get your sustainably sourced adventure gear at pureworldshop.com. And Christine, how can they find and support you? Um, you can find me on Instagram, Christine underscore Clark 5, and I'll be there for anything you need. Awesome. Well, thanks, everybody. And thank you, Christine. Thank you. See ya.